there, welcome to Boxing Deep Dive. I'm Lyndon Hosking, and great to have you along for another episode of Dream Fights. And we all love this uh, this program. All the hosts love it anyway. Hopefully, you do out there as well. But this is where we match up two greats from different eras and uh, match them against each other and uh, break it all down and see who we think wins and why. So I'm going to bring in my co-host for this episode. We've got Grant Tazzy Brown, and it's great to have Peter Maniatis back from. Uh, a little bit of a spell, and uh, welcome aboard, guys. Thanks for coming back. Great to be back. And Tassie, you you're, um, you're living the life up in Queensland at the moment. How's how's the uh, the weather up there? Yeah, it's been good. I mean, it's been hot. The sun hasn't really been out too much. It's been a bit rainy and a bit mixed, but it's just good to be on holidays, mate, not having to go to work and, mm. and just, yeah, just chill out, mate. It's just good, yeah. Good stuff. Well, uh, we've got a big fight. Uh, plan for you in this episode, but before we get to that, we're going to go to our poll. This was a little bit polarizing because it was uh, Duran versus Chavez, and you can see there 67% for Duran, 33% for Chavez. Look, probably not a lot of surprise there. Um, Duran was, you know, in many eyes, the you know the undisputed number one of all time. Um, it was pretty difficult, Pete. If you had been along on the episode last week, who would you have uh, voted for, Duran or Chavez, that lightweight? I would have gone um, Duran unanimous decision. Yeah, it was a really I, tough I think one, you wasn't it? Yeah. Eight rounds to four, nine rounds to three, I think you would have won that comfortably. Yeah, it was a really tough one, wasn't it, Tazzy? Because, uh, you know, I must admit I, I was a little bit reluctant to even put it out there because I thought, here, here we go, I'm going to get absolutely slammed by everyone. But there was actually a fair few votes for Chavez because we all... I think we regard Duran as the number one of all time, but my view was just that the styles made it that I thought Chavez might get in out hustle Duran um, and not be intimidated. But uh, yeah, no, no real surprise there was it because Duran was just you know he was one of a kind. If you're going to put anyone in the conversation, why not put Chavez? I mean, Chavez is a one of the greatest fighters of all time, one of the toughest mm. fighters of all time, um, just a living legend. I'd be at the moment the greatest Mexican ever. I mean, but Duran was just, yeah, at lightweight, mm. such a beast. It would have been, look, it would have been a great fight, mate, two bulls. But, I mean, you know, I think Duran would have got the better of him. But, I mean, it's definitely a conversation, mate. It's, um, you know, it's, you're talking, when you get to that legendary status, there's not that much between these guys, yeah. a Whitaker, a Chavez, a Duran. Um, you know, you're talking superstars, yeah. all the famous. Yeah, yeah, exactly right, mate. My, my whole argument, the whole thing was with... A fighter such as Chavez, um, then it would be an insult not to even have him in the equation to be able to beat someone like Duran. I mean, he's, his portfolio was just as impressive as anyone, and at lightweight, he was almost unbeatable as well. So, my whole argument was we, to people that were saying, "Hey, what are you, you know, what are you on about?" Was that well, how could you discount someone of Chavez's pedigree that he uh, that he wouldn't at least give Duran one hell of a fight? So, on to this week, and it's another all Aussie affair. Uh, Tazzy, you've got the honours. Who have you got for us? Yeah, mate, we've got um, Shannon the Master Blaster, the Bulleye Blaster, Shannon Taylor versus Jeff the Haunted Horn. So um, two all-time great Australian fighters, the Blaster from Wollongong and Jeff Horn from Queensland. You can see there of uh, taking the liberty, mate, of uh, making at the uh, 12 rounds for Horn's WBO World Away title. We'll give Shannon a crack at that. Um, but we've made it at Suncorp Stadium. That's where I think most of the crowd would uh, be coming from in brisbane australia so um what about you? i would have liked to the wollongong else? but anyway all right mate no worries where, where would you have had it though wollongong somewhere or sydney or where would you have had it yeah i would have had it in sydney mate i'm more of a sydney man myself but i mean um yeah but you know it is what it is mate um no dramas we'll go we'll go we'll travel we'll travel okay all right i should have asked you that uh, last week when uh, i got the terms of the of the fight but let's have a look at uh jeff horn's record pete uh, you can see there, 20 wins, 3 losses, 1 draw, 13 KOs. Was a representative at the London Olympics in 2012, where he made the quarterfinals. Uh, as a pro Australian welterweight champion in 2013, and of course a WBO welterweight champion in 2017 over Manny Pacquiao. Some notable fights here for him. You can see there he stopped Randall Bailey in 2016. Had the win over Pacquiao in, in 2017. Defended his title against Gary Corcoran in 2017. And then uh, probably went downhill from there for him after that, where he lost his title to Crawford. Had the knockout of uh, a very depleted Anthony Mundine in 2018. Uh, had the two wars with Zarafa, and then was uh, what looks to be the end of his career now. 
he was stopped by Tim Zhu. So, Pete, um, what do you what do you make of uh, of, of Jeff? Uh, we all I think there's the the Pacquiao argument of whether he won or not. But all that aside, do you think he was an underrated Aussie fighter or a overrated Aussie fighter? Um, look, he's an Olympian, so he, he was a good amateur. Now, I remember early in his career, he knocked out um, Sam Columban in the second round. He just yep. hit him with a third. First round, and, it was. Um, mm. Was it first round? I remember then he fought uh, Nofar Ben Rabar as well, and they, they wanted to do a winner-take-all, and he said, yep, we'll do that as well. So when you when you get fighters that do that, that aren't looking to pad their records, you knew he was a fair dinkum boxer, and you knew he was going to try and test himself at the best level. Um Technically, he was so okay. calm, I and mean, he's awkward. He was tough. He, uh, he, he, he was. He, he, what, what's the word? I mean, no one really gave him a chance against Manny Pacquiao, no but one did. No. He, no, you know, no one did. But the fact that he was out there and he put himself in that position to fight Manny, and you mentioned Rendell Bailey. I mean, Rendell Bailey dropped him mm. pretty hard, and he yep. got up, and he got dropped a few other fights too, and he kept getting up. So. Um, he was an all heart fighter, and you, it's hard to because to beat Manny Pacquiao, I mean, we're talking about probably you know top two or three greatest fighters of all time, and, and to beat a fighter that ill, and even to fight Crawford in America, I mean, that you've got to, he went nine rounds with Crawford, I mean, that, that's still a massive effort. And Nick Khan and other fighters haven't gone nine rounds with Crawford um, and Cal Brooks, so where do you put him? At, at his absolute premium best, you've got to put him high up there. You've got to on his performances. Yeah. You just have to. Casey, before we get to, um, to your opinion of Jeff, you can probably see the, the Anthony Mundine there to the one we saw in the classic fight we did against him, against uh, Daniel Gill, how much he'd been depleted in that time. That was That's pretty sad to see that. Um, but uh, what do you make of Jeff Horn, Tazzy? Um, Again, I'll ask the question, do you think he was overrated or underrated as a fighter or just got as much out of himself as he possibly could? You can't call you can't call him overrated from everything he no, achieved, well, as Peter There's said. No yeah. he, he, he's a I mean a, an Olympian, so I remember he was at the Olympics with Luke Jackson, they were roommates. Mm. I was trying to look at the time. Um, so good amateur, he, he actually just missed out on the bronze medal. He lost yep. to the Ukrainian. Mm -hmm. um, as a pro as Peter mentioned, a fight that I rated highly is when he fought Ben Rabar, because no one would fight Ben Rabar. Good fight. Ben Rabar was the most awkward fight. I was a teammate of his for all Team Phoenix. He was over there at Craig Christians in WA. Jeff went over there and beat Ben Rabar so, um, early on in his career. So, to me, I started thinking this guy is actually, you know, he, he's got something, this guy, because to go over and beat Rabar at that stage of your career, is phenomenal. Um, a few more good wins. They brought him along well at the time, Duco. Yeah. And they, um, you know, Randall Bailey, a good American, he got Choppity a good win. And then when he just, you know, shocked the board against Manny, um, yeah, that's crazy. I don't look. That's his, what he's known. He's known for, and he's always going to be known for that. You know, there's a few things I could pick. Manny, obviously, being the smaller guy, and and obviously. Um, yeah, probably not as motivated for the fight, you know, not really as focused. They thought it was just going to come down and get a paycheck and holiday. But end of the day, it's on the history books. He did get the win. And then we have a fought Terence Crawford. Well, going nine rounds of Crawford is a phenomenal effort. I mean, um, you know, he's one of the pound for pound top probably three in the world right, right now. And he'll go down to history as something special, especially if he beats Spence. So, mm. but Jeff had a great career. I mean, um, you know, um, he deserves every accolade he gets. Yeah, well, I, um, my opinion of it all is that I think it really um, disturbs me how a lot of Aussies turned on Jeff Horn. Um, one, because of the he beat Pacquiao, strange enough, I can't believe that would be the case, but a lot of Aussies actually turned on him after that for beating, for beating Manny Pacquiao. And then, of course, Tim Zhu came on board. Um, he was Australia's popular fighter at the time, and it was almost like Jeff was a villain. But I, I must admit... I'm a massive fan of Jeff Horn. I don't think he's the most talented fighter to ever uh, grace our shores, but I just think he got everything out of himself. I don't care what people say about the Manny Pacquiao fight. I've got no doubt that Manny came down and, like he said, was probably here for a holiday and a payday and 
to soak up the sun and everything else, but it doesn't take away the fact that, that Jeff took him head on in front of 50,000 people on a, a worldwide um, televised event and got the win. And I don't subscribe to this whole thing about, you know, it was a gift decision, all this sort of stuff. Just because um, you win, or sorry, you lose a close fight doesn't mean you're ripped off. It was a very, very close fight. Jeff got the decision. Now, I wouldn't have argued had it, if it had it went the other way, but at the end of the day, Jeff got the decision. And um, and even his fights against Crawford, I was actually at that fight in Vegas, and the heart that he showed was just uh, unbelievable. Uh, and Crawford's just, an, you know, just something else, isn't he? Something special. And I was also there for both the Rafa fights, and again, the heart that he showed, especially in that second fight, I must admit, when it looked like he was gone and he came back and uh, and dropped uh, Michael Zarafa twice. Um, yeah, I mean, I just think he's been such a credit to Australian boxing, and uh, I'm hoping that though that he stays retired. That's my that's my personal opinion of him. I don't think he's got anything else he can do. So that's my little two cents on uh, on Jeff. His opponent in this fight is uh, another very underrated Aussie fighter, the bully blast, as you said, uh, Taddy, Shannon Taylor, 22, 10 and 3, with 37 KOs. Most of those losses came towards the end of his career, so it's a little bit misleading. Uh, Australian champion twice, OPBF World Weight champion in 98, won a skew of uh, regional titles, that's just too many to put in there. And you can see there, some, some really capable fighters, Willie Wise, KO2, uh, Livingston Bramble, another former world champion, KO1, Jake Rodriguez, the guy that uh, Costa Zoo won his world title against, but he got him away quicker than what Costa did. Had that fight against the number one pound for pound at the time in Shane Mosley, no disgrace in that. And a couple of other fighters there, actually, yeah. fought, you can see there he fought Arthur Abraham for the world title in 2006. And uh, had a pretty credible performance against Chuck Mundine uh, in 2009. So Tazzy, what, just tell us about this matchup. Why, why, why were you such a fan of uh, Shannon Taylor? And why, why did you want to see him against uh, Jeff Horn? And what makes you think he can beat Jeff Horn? Obviously. Well, it's a water weight fight. I mean, they're yeah. both at best water weights. Jeff Horn was world champion at water weight. Shannon Taylor fought for the world title against Shannon Mosley. I'm not talking about the middleweight version of Shannon Taylor. I'm not talking about the super middleweight version of Shannon Taylor. I'm not talking about the Shannon Taylor fought Mundine or fought this, Abraham. This or um, mm. I'm talking about the guy that knocked out Willie Wise. I'm talking about the guy that went over and fought the great Shane Mosley. Look, Shannon Taylor beat Spike Cheney after Spike Cheney won the Silver Medal Olympic Games. Couldn't win a state title. Mm -hmm. Shannon Taylor beat him for the New South Wales state title. Amazing. So he went out, he fought Costa Zoo when Costa yeah. Zoo was um, uh, you know, competing for Russia. I think he was 17 years old and gave Costa a hell of a fight. Yeah. A some, very, some very tough fight. He, he didn't, win. didn't win it. Mm. Well, he didn't win it, but he, he gave him a hell of a fight. So that's as an amateur, as an Australian, he went right through the ranks, destroyed everyone. Shannon Taylor was not only tough, he had a great left jab. He had a great guard, like he had more of a high defense and a body puncher. Geez, he crippled you to the body. So a prime motivator, Shannon Taylor, um, you know, was very hard man to beat at his best, mate. And he might have got that shot a bit late against Mosey. Bill Moore is trying to keep him here. Jeff Fennick then got him the shot. He could have got a shot against a lesser guy for, I think, the WBA. But Shannon goes, I want the top dog. Mosey just but come off the fight against Oscar De La Hoya. So he's a pound for pound king of boxing. WBC World Title, it says the Palace main event. He got, you know, close to a mill. Um, and that was, you know, that was the Sean Taylor I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. He was just a freak, mate. Tough, vicious to the body. He believed that he had the arrogance of Jeff Fennick style where he just wanted to murder. I mean, um, yeah, Shannon's a great, great fighter. One of our best and doesn't probably get mentioned as much by today's fans, but... Going back to the older boys, and that they all know who Shannon Taylor was, the ball I blaster made, and made, um, yeah, a very hard man to beat when he's on his game. Yeah, he definitely had a mean streak, there's no doubt about that. But Pete, he sort of had a little bit of an up and down career, didn't he? Because after he, he uh, lost to Mosley, he came back and fought Julian Holland um, and got stopped in the seventh round, I think it was, and which was a major shock. And he never really, I know he had a couple of bigger fights after that, but he just really struggled to get his career back on track after that, didn't he? Yeah, look, it was more his lifestyle outside of boxing yeah, that didn't contribute yeah. to his performances. So he, he would get sidetracked and get into the party scene and what have you, and you can't do both. You can't mix both, and he tried to do that, and it it took its toll on him. But um, 
early in his career, I remember early on, he was chasing Costa Zoo hard. And he, he wanted Costa Zoo. He thought he could make 140 to fight Costa Zoo. And a lot of people in Sydney thought that was going to be the fight. But uh, obviously went up the road away. But, um, you know, in that brief moment where Shannon Taylor was actually knocking out a lot of ex-world champions, if you hadn't put him in a world title fight, you just don't know what he what he could have achieved because he was really focused and everything was working well in his life. So he's one of those guys that things would spiral outside of boxing with his lifestyle and it would contribute to boxing because obviously when you're getting that party style, it's hard to actually get in the gym and get up six in the morning when you're getting home at four in the morning. So that's the thing you've got to balance up with Shannon Taylor. He lived life to the fullest and um, with professional boxing, you just can't do that. You can't get away with it. Uh, 100%. Well, Tazzy, we're going to go to the predictions now. Um, obviously, you, you picked this fight for, for, for very good reasons. I think it was a great, a great pick uh, for the Australian watchers, of course. I'm not sure the, some of our international watchers would know much about Shannon. They'd obviously know a lot about Jeff Horn. Um, but who do you think, after breaking it all down in your mind, and no doubt you visualise it, who do you think wins the fight and, and, and why? There's no respect to Jeff Horn because he's a legend, but I, I think Shannon, at his best, too good in most departments, too strong. Jeff's fairly easy hit. Jeff can get hurt a lot, gets dropped a lot, and I believe Shannon, if he hurts you, he gets you out of there. Like, you know, Buck Smith, Willie Wise, um, you know, Bramble, Jake Rodriguez, all these guys. So I think uh, Shannon stops him probably about round seven. Um, you know, with, to the body or head with a left hook. And um, I just don't see Jeff having the power to, to bother Shannon or not enough slicker boxer to worry Shannon. He leaps in and out a bit, Jeff. He's a bit awkward, but he, I think Shannon, um, yeah, I think Shannon just at their best, just yeah, a bit, a bit too, too strong and too good in a lot of departments mm -hmm. at his best. Yep. The seventh round knockout for you, Tazzy. What about you, Pete? Um, it depends what Shannon Taylor turns up. If it's Shannon Taylor early in his career when he's when he was with um, Bill Morty and they had him on a straight and narrow, I mean, he was very hard to beat. Um, but Jeff Horn, he, he, you know, when he steps up and has a big night, he can beat anyone. So it would have been a, a pretty difficult fight to judge I, or, or to predict. I mean, I see this going the distance. And I see it being a real torrid fight. Um, but I, I, I do see Shannon Taylor winning a split decision and having moments where he has, he has Jeff Horn down on the canvas, and but Horn coming back and winning rounds with his big heart. But Shannon Taylor for mine, split decision. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting one. I, I must admit I've gone back and forth a lot. And I think... I think the the Jeff Horn that fought Manny Pacquiao um, was something special. Uh, and I won't say he fought out of his skin or fought above himself because I don't think there's anything um, such thing as that. I think you just fight to your ability, I think. And you have that mindset, as we saw with uh, George Cambosis against uh, Tiafimo Lopez. And I suppose it remains to be seen whether he can back that up now he's a champion. But I think... Um, I, I probably think, you know, like you, Pete, with Shannon Taylor, if he's at his best as well... And Jeff Horn's at his best, the, the Pacquiao Jeff. I think Jeff can out-muscle Shannon. But if you take those, that one fight away, I think that Shannon Taylor, like you, Tazzy, I think he would be too big, too strong. Um, those body punches, and Jeff showed that he could be hurt by, by body punches. Um, so I think that Shannon would be a bit too big and strong as the rounds went on. And I think he would probably stop him. I'm, I'm, gonna say, I won't gonna, I'm not going to say the ninth round, because that's, that's Jeff's bogey round, of course. Um, but I'm going to say the tenth round that uh, that Shannon Taylor gets the job done. He breaks him down with those, you know, those brutal punches to the body. And uh, Jeff would, as always, go down swinging with a lot of heart. But I just think that Shannon Taylor was, as I said, a bit too a bit too strong uh, for Jeff Horn. So, um, which and it's amazing to say that because obviously Jeff Horn beat Manny Pacquiao, and here we are selecting Shannon Taylor over him. But again, it comes down to styles and and the time they fought. So, um, so Lyndon, Lin Lin you're 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 yep. you're a bit. You're a bit of an old boy like me and a bit older, but, you know, but you you must have sort of looked up to Shannon a bit because he was, at that time, you, yeah, because when you were coming up, he was like, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, no, I did, mate. I um, I probably just got the tail end of Shannon. I, I come into it in 92, was my first senior 
uh, Australian title. Shannon was probably about to turn pro. I'm probably thinking. I think that sounds about right because um, he'd lost to. He yeah. beat, he beat uh, of course, Spike Sheeney at the 88, the 89, whatever his state titles, which was massive at the time. And but he, he couldn't beat <laughs> Stefan Scriggins. Stefan Scriggins always had his mess. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. He had a bit of trouble with Stefan. And Stefan yeah. Scriggins. I mean, he, he just beat everyone as an amateur, especially in Australia. Uh, he had so, 200 fights or something. Yeah. yeah. He was. Yeah. He would have been a nightmare to to fight. Especially if I had a fought him at Weld away because he's probably about six inches tall than me and had an inch of, you know, about a foot long. But And the southpaw. Uh, yeah, and, and the, the southpaw south and had that real in and out sort of style. So, but uh, yeah, I did. I had a lot of respect for Shannon Taylor. I was actually quite um, happy that he, he turned pro um, around that time because he was, and, he, and to me, he just seemed so big. He had that really big, no disrespect to Shannon, but he had that big head, you know, and the big, the arms, and he was actually a really big. Uh, a big light welterweight at the time and obviously went to welterweight. So, yeah, I had a lot of respect for, for Shannon Taylor. And, um, and and as I think one of you guys said, he's, he's definitely an underrated uh, uh, fighter in Australian boxing history. So, so there it is. Yeah, all three of us have gone for Shannon Taylor to beat Jeff Horn, which is uh, which is very surprising. But it'll uh, be interesting to see what everyone else that out there thinks, uh, especially the, the Aussie fight fans, because I think it would definitely create a bit of uh, discussion. But if you do have a comment, make sure you um, you put it in. And, and more than anything, guys, yeah. I, I forgot to mention, like and subscribe to the channel. We're trying to grow the channel. So let us know yeah. your feedback. Like us, subscribe, share, all that sort of stuff. And let us know what you and, think. And, so. I, and I just want to I just want to give a shout-out to Shannon Taylor because, yeah. I, you know, I know him well. And I didn't pick him because I picked him because of his ability. But yeah. he's a great guy. He's been a, a legend of Australian boxing. Um, he's given his heart and soul to Australian fight yeah. fans and – as Jeff has as well, but Jeff's a bit a bit younger in that. But I just want to say, Shannon, we haven't forgotten you. You're a bloody legend, mate. I love you. Yeah, no, well said, Tazzy. And, um, yeah, we tend to forget fighters like Shannon Taylor, who just gave everything for the sport and uh, never left anything inside the uh, in the ring and uh, gave us so many great fights over the years. So, so much respect uh, to you, Shannon. And Jeff, you know, as I said before, he's one of my favourite fighters. But in this instance, I think Shannon would have been a bit too strong. So, Pete... You're up next. I'm not sure. Have you got someone in mind or you need a bit of time to think about it? No, no, mate. I've really got a good one. Yep. I've got Jason Maloney oh. and the other person's also fought for a world title and lost, Paul Ferrari at Super Bantamweight. Great Aussie matchup. Or Bantamweight. Yeah. Whichever one you want. You can have Paul Ferrari at Bantamweight or you can have him at Super Bantam up against Jason Maloney. So that's great. I'm, I'm that's sure, Warren. Um, I'm sure Jason will be chuffed about that, featuring in a, in a dream fight you know, a week, a couple of weeks after we've done Roberto Duran and uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, and he's going to step up and have his first dream fight, which I think will be actually a really good one. I'm not sure whether people out there have seen a lot of Paul Ferrari, but if you're a newer fight fan in the last sort of 20 or 30 years, you, you've, um, you're going to be treated to a, a true uh, master in the uh, in the ring. He was, um, he's definitely... Uh, a great fighter and gave, gave Carlos Cerati, the great Carlos Cerati, a, a hell of a fight back in the day as well. So, no, that's really good pick for the Aussie fight fans out there, Pete. So, look forward to that one. So, Taddy, I'm going to let you get back to your holiday, mate. Really appreciate you taking the time out to uh, spend good the stuff, with us. And, um, see you, Pete. See you, Lyndon. Thank have you. A, have a great uh, rest of your holiday, mate. Pete, we'll see you next week. Okay. Thanks, guys. See you, guys. Yes.